I'm Terry Christensen, from a marketing specialist from the Iron Chromatography Sample Prep Business Unit. Uh, today we're going to talk about using Iron Chromatography with high resolution, accurate mass spectroscopy, uh, ICHRAM for metabolomics. Omics is the study of the proteome and the metabolome. Um, from the genome to transcription, then to proteome, and then metabolomics. And it's used to study potential disease markers, but much like um, the genome studies, they've had much promise and much excitement, but have not really played through completely. However, metabolomics, it studies all the effects of all of these, and in that case, we have already shown some very amazing uh, disease discovery and biomarkers. So to understand the difference between genome and proteome and metabolomics, we have here example of the monarch butterfly. It's always going to be a monarch butterfly. That's the genome. But as you can see, it starts out as a caterpillar, and that's the proteome and the metabolome, and then it becomes a beautiful butterfly. Now it has different lifestyles. The ca caterpillar eats different plants, and the butterfly eats little flowers, or nectar from the flowers, and they fly in as well, whereas the caterpillar stays still. That is definitely the metabolomics. It's expression of the proteome, the diet, and the lifestyle. So what is metabolomics? It's a profiling and the screening of targeted analysis of metabolites in the cell, tissue, organ, or organism. Unlike the genome, it provides an instant snapshot of cellular processes. It reveals change in metabolites from a disease state, a diet, or the phenotype, the body size, or the body weight. It also, though, can be used to look at external agents. For example, exposure to pharmaceuticals, environmental contaminants, or poisons. Challenges in metabolism are very, are very large. Uh, first of all, we have complex samples, and the field itself is quite complex. Uh, it requires both biologists, chemists, spectroscopists, um, chromatographers, statisticians, and then it brings it back, the information back to the biologists. Therefore, it often requires um, academia and industry collaboration. The analytes are very diverse and they have a very wide concentration range, making it challenging for us analysts. Additionally, many of them are small polar metabolites, which aren't don't separate well with many of the traditional analysis methods. Uh, the limit of detection is very important, often requiring very low detection limits. And as well, these are isobaric requiring separation, um, meaning that with the mass spec alone, they cannot be identified and the, we need a chromatography separation method on the front side. And of course, data handling analysis managed by Civ and TraceFinder, MZ Cloud, and lipid, lipid search. And of course, always identification of unknowns. And that will continue to be a big issue. Where I see high resolution, accurate mass, I see HRAM as advantages, of course, is in the small polar metabolites and the limited detection and the isobaric compounds. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But without tools, metabolomics has often been described as looking for a needle in a very large hay haystack with the right tools. It's a very large, different colored needle in the haystack. Metabolites have very diverse physical properties, from triglycerides to very polar compounds like organic acids and sugars and um, nucleotides, from hydrophobic, of course, to hydrophilic. And it requires different chromatography separation methods, uh, reverse phase and helic, and of course, ion chromatography, which we're going to talk about here today. The mass spec ionization can handle both positive and negative analysis. So what are the advantages here? First, let's talk about the chromatography, the Dionics IC systems and products. We have a metal-free flow path that provides a bio-inert system. We also have exceptional chromatography selectivity and reproducibility for, to chroma chromatography separate isobaric compounds. We also have a patented electrolytic desalting suppressor. This um, removes the ion suppression commonly uh, happening in many of these uh, samples, uh, reducing therefore the sensitivity. And that suppressor also improves sensitivity based by reducing the chemical noise. 
and the QExactive Orbitrap, we're keying it with a high resolution accurate mass spectrometer. It's a patent technology, has mass accuracy to one ppm in full scan and all ion fragmentation, ensures confident compound identification. Uh, it has high resolving power up to 140,000 and reduces isobaric misidentification, but still requires a chromatography separation method. We have two applications we've de developed for this uh, metabolomics. Uh, we have a capillary IC system at 25 microliters per minute on the ICS 4000 HPIC system, coupled with the QExactive hybrid uh, quadrupole orbitrap mass spectrometer. It's a 45 minute analysis, and we used it for our non targeted metabolomic analysis. Additionally, we developed a higher flow rate. Uh, application at 380 microliters per minute on the ICS 5000 plus HPIC system coupled with uh, QExactive HF hybrid and this is a high throughput uh, targeted analysis in 18 minutes but it can also be used for untargeted as well. Let's talk about the um, flow diagram as you can see here on the left is the ICS-5000 HPIC modular IC system. This system can be modified um, in many different ways for many different applications. Um, and we selected this because of its uh, flexibility as well as its high pressure capabilities. Um, and in the box there shows the, um, the modular system inside the box. Um, all of our uh, reagent-free systems, um, the pump only sees deionized water. So you can see on the top, water flows through the pump, and then it goes to the EG, where the mobile phase, or eluent, is made electrolytically. And then it goes through, through several uh, traps and a degasser, where the sample then is introduced there in between the guard and the degas module, and uh, separated um, by ion exchange. You can see the sample comes in as a mixture, and then is separated at the end of the column. And then after the column is one of our most important devices, it's our desalting suppressor. And that's what makes it possible to couple it with the mass spec. And in line is our first detector. We're using conductivity detector to both monitor the health of the suppressor. After that, the effluent from the conductivity cell is then coupled with um, a uh, makeup solution of methanol and acetic acid, or you can just use methanol, and it's introduced into the mass spec. Now, these electrolytic devices require a backflow of, of fluid to drive the chemistry of the electrolytic devices. So since we're using the effluent to go to the mass spec, we're going to introduce now uh, water to drive those reactions up here in the right-hand corner. So let's talk a little bit of how that patented suppressor works. Uh, we have um, the uh, sample, uh, our eluent or mobile phase coming in at the top, uh, KOH, potassium hydroxide. And let's say for this example, we're going to have analyte peaks as acetate, succinate, and citrate. They're introduced again through the injection valve and um, separated on ion exchange column. As they come out of the ion exchange column, they are now potassium salts. Okay, and the mobile phase, of course, is also coming out as hydroxide. So now we introduce the suppressor. What it does is exchanges the cation for hydronium, and the potassium goes to waste, and then the analytes are converted to their acids. Now, for the first conduct, for the first detector, the conductivity detector, we get an increased response because acids have a stronger conductivity response than for the analytes. But more importantly, for the mass spec, now we have um, low concentrations now of acids in water, making it now compatible for mass spec. Now. IC has a broad, unlike other separation methods, IC has a broad coverage for polar metabolites. And here we've circled um, the analytes um, that ion chromatography um, can identify and separate. Here we're showing um, our first chromatogram. This is an ion chromatography chromatogram. We show 49 peaks that we have identified using our separation method. And here are the metabolite peaks. 
They're ranging from some inorganic compounds that we normally see, as well as uh, organic acids of importance in the glycolysis and TCA cycle, as well as some nucleotides. Now, we compared uh, ion chromatography as the front end separation with other separation methods coupled to the same mass spec so we could have a direct comparison between three analytical separation methods. With ion chromatography, we were able to get 11 monophosphate sugar isomers shown here. Um, and why, if, if the mass spec has such high resolution, why do we need to have a chromatography separation? Shown here, isobaric means that it has the same mass, but it also means that the mass, mass fragmentations have the same patterns. So we're looking at comparison between peak 9 and peak 10, and as you can see, they have the same MSMS -MS fragmentation patterns. The only way we can tell that the first one, peak 9, is fructose 6-phosphate and the second one is glucose 6-phosphate is because of retention. Now, it, I see, again, to demonstrate it has a better separation for polar metabolites. Um, here we have, we compared, um, we have showing comparison between cap IC and helic in the left and the blue and uh, cap IC in the green. And as you can see, um, about the halfway down on the first column, we have glucose 1-phosphate and glucose 6-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate, three peaks, whereas right next to it is the helic method, and we have one peak with a couple of knobs on it. So you could kind of say, well, we have two peaks there. Um, also, uh, we have cis conotate there, the third line on the right, and trans -aconitate. Uh, these are commonly separated easily by ion chromatography, but as you can see in the helic method, they only able to, to identify one of the isomers. And this is what we expect from ion chromatography, and we, and we want to bring that technology to the metabolomics. It also has extreme sensitivity. As you can see here, we're getting a 60 PPT uh, concentration peak, and the peaks, we still have great peak shape. Now the concentration, we're actually able to get less than one femtomole on column with LODs less than one nanomolar. And uh, comparison, what I want you to get off this slide is that we have 11 isomers mono sugar phosphates with cap IC here in the blue. And up on top, we compared against reverse phase. Um, and on the bottom, on helic. So on the top, uh, they have uh, three Three, two to three peaks um, separated. Uh, on helic, we have uh, three peaks separated, but of course, with cap IC, we have 11. And so, what it means is that if you are seeing many of the sugar phosphates, you may have many others that you're not seeing, and your, your interpretation and then the biology of what's going on may be misleading. What I also want you to look at is the response. If you can see under cap IC, we have an E to the 8 response, whereas with helic, we have an E to the 5 and the E to the, and reverse phase E to the 6 to E to the 7. So we have about a 10 to 100 times improvement in sensitivity. So the point is, is that IC has superior resolution and sensitivity to helic and reverse phase. Now we compared using this plot the, the compounds we could identify with the, these separation methods, and again shows the a difference between the three separation methods and the advantages of IC. Totally, we were able to identify 66 out of many features. Um, reverse phase was only able to identify 29. Helic, 38. But IC, we were able to get 65 out of the 66. So we found more than twice of many of the polar metabolites. And this is in a real sample. This is an oral cancer. Uh, cell lysates. Um, we also, of course, I mentioned earlier that we also did the method on a two millimeter format and of course we verified that we still have the same great resolution for these difficult um, phosphate sugars. So we're able to get an 11 monophosphate sugars and 9 diphosphate sugars. Now we also um, wanted to look for a really robust method so here we took peak 9 and monitored it through retention time of 150 injections. And what we found was great reproducibility on in our monitoring. 
So we want to propose this method as the method needed for metabolomic researchers because of its robustness. Uh, we know that metabolomic researchers may be doing thousands and thousands of samples to find that needle in a haystack. So we, we want to offer our most robust method here um, using uh, the two millimeter application. So in conclusion, many isobaric metabolites, for example, the difficult sugar phosphates, have identical MSMS fragmentation patterns. Therefore, chromatography separations are necessary for identification and quantification. And ion chromatography provides an efficient and sensitive separation for these small polar metabolites using our patented technology. Um, IC with high resolution accurate mass spectrometry uses our patented Orbitrap technology. We get a 10 to 100 fold increase in sensitivity. We can resolve many more isomers than reverse phase and, and helic, and it provides us a, a superior and complementary method for small polar metabolites. Thank you.